Now, what's great about both John Favreau and Dave Filoni is the fact that they are really taking a lot of aspects from Star Wars Legends and doing everything in their power to really adapting those into live action iterations for Star Wars TV shows, movies, whatever have you, to really fulfill those Legends tales that were approved by George Lucas well over 20 years ago that really filled a lot of fans' hearts and made them cherish the franchise for decades. This is Mike Zero. Subscribe if you're new and like this video to see future Star Wars updates. I'm also on Twitter at MikeZero1. I thank you also very much for the great and kind support. And without wasting too much of your time, let's get right into the exciting subject. Now, what's really great about what's going on now over at Lucasfilm is that number one, Disney CEO Bob Iger is going to be cleaning up house over there that's going to take place, you know, anywhere from one and a half to two years long to really fulfill a brand new team and employees fully on the grand scale that's going to be more passionately driven that's going to really drive the star wars fans in a better way the other thing is that they are really doing everything that they can to fulfill the Star Wars fans' dreams coming true with everything ranging from what fans have been asking for for the longest time. Simple common sense, right? Now, when you look at stuff like this, what's really intriguing has a lot to do with the Kenobi series. And we're going to be talking about the sequel, aka the soft reboot of the Kenobi show. We talked about this lightly a couple of days ago. And there's something that's very exciting that is developing for this project. Now, specifically, of course, with the Disney executives pre-planning and, of course, to expand the current slate of Star Wars projects. One of them is a direct sequel to the Kenobi series that is planned as a two-part movie that will be released on Disney+, Plus unless one of the major films are cancelled that would allow a slot opening for theaters. Now, the sequel is planned to be a soft reboot and will not be called Season 2. However, the current title that has been chosen by Disney that they are preparing to announce by the beginning of 2024 is Obi-Wan Kenobi The Only Hope. Previously, Disney has chosen a title for the soft reboot as Time of the Jedi. However, they wanted to have the title hold value or nostalgia to the original trilogy as part of the title. Now, let me just say one thing about this. It's a very interesting title decision that Disney really has their eyes focused on because it is a throwback to Leia Organa in that hologram, which she says, help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi, you're my, you're, the, you're my only hope. This is a very interesting title. It's kind of reminiscent of that piece of dialogue. So Obi-Wan Kenobi, The Only Hope, is planned to be a two-part movie and we're going to be diving into some of the story details that have been brewing behind closed doors between John and Dave with storyboards coming back to life that are taken directly from Stuart Beatty's cancelled Kenobi trilogy because of Kathleen Kennedy. And yes, Kathleen Kennedy once again really was a brick wall for what could have been an amazing installment in theaters. So, moving on to the next big thing here is this, alright? Now, this is currently not a code name or a placeholder, but rather the actual title decision that Disney is rolling with for the two-part Kenobi movie that is set to take many elements from Stuart Beatty's cancelled trilogy. The two-part film is set to feature multiple high-end flashbacks to Order 66 and a new dedicated story surrounding the survival of Mace Windu and hidden Jedi across the galaxy. So basically, this story is going to be about the setup of the generation of Jedi that have been in hiding post-Order 66. Should be very interesting, you know, because we could see or witness other, you know, uh, characters that we have learned about either in Legends or Canon that survived the big event, right? So this is where things begin to get a little bit more involved. Now, given that Ewan McGregor and Hayden Christensen, by the way, they both signed on not just for multi-show contract deals, but they also signed on for movie deals. And most likely those movie deals that they signed on for alludes to these two. These, this basic two-part Kenobi movie, movie, of course, system that's going to release on Disney+. Plus. And I talked about this the other day. I'm not quite sure if I really support a Kenobi movie or two-part movie releasing on Disney+, Plus, you should really throw that in, in the theaters, replace it with the Ray movie, put the Ray film on Disney+, Plus, and I think that's fair. That's just my opinion on things. Say what you will. 
So what's interesting about this further is that Sam Jackson has already been approached by Lucasfilm on fulfilling the role and he is 100% on board with returning. Additionally, the two-part film is already setting plans to bringing back actress Natalie Portman for a new personal story of Darth Vader that will be based on his conflicts from the comics into live action. Now, this most likely is alluding to either visions or flashbacks of Padme Amidala through Vader's mind that will be done in a powerful way. Both Ewan McGregor and Hayden have already reportedly signed on for, like I said, this two-part film and would explain their recent movie deal that they signed a couple of months ago. Now, what is confirmed is Hayden does have a signed multi-show contract deal, alright? And that's the best thing of all, because he's going to be in Ahsoka Season 2. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about him in Ahsoka Season 1 as both Vader and Anakin Skywalker. Looking forward to that as well. It's going to be a great time to be a Star Wars fan. Let me tell you, starting in August. It really is. And the fact that Ewan McGregor also signed on for a multi-show contract deal, it has a lot to do with the Ahsoka series, specifically Season 2, for his return in particular, and other shows for Order 66 flashback moments. Now, these movies, all right, we're not quite sure about the running time per film. That's really up in the air and a big mystery. Who knows if each movie's gonna be shorter. That's gonna, you know, kind of be a decent length combined as a two-part film. We're gonna have to wait and see. But basically, the, the reason why they're doing a two-part film is Stuart Beatty had a lot of ideas for a trilogy that got canceled by Kathleen Kennedy. It was a three-part story, and technically the first part was told just through a different perspective by Joby Harold with the series. And so a lot of what was untold actually remains and will be told in these two-part films, all right? This two-part film, I should say. Now, what's really exciting about this is that they are basing some of Vader's story off of the comics. And if you guys have read some of the 2018 comics and onwards, there's a lot of personal side stories of Darth Vader that do, in fact, involve Padme Amidala. The fact that they do are, you know, do or want to get Natalie Portman back, in, back involved in this project it could very well have something to do with why Natalie spoke up a couple of days ago about why she wants to return to Star Wars. I'm not quite sure if she was told to put that out there to kind of slowly tease things up for her return. We'll have to wait and see. But overall, they do want her back because she is planned to be a part of this story. And again, Stuart Beatty, I think he was a missed legendary, you know, writer that could have really turned things around for Star Wars. I think he really would have done a great job. I do. He himself even said that he would have done things far differently than what Joby Harold did with the Kenobi series, that he was rather upset with how things came out and about for that, especially with Reva and everything ranging from her to the Inquisitors. By the way, in his trilogy, he didn't really focus on Inquisitors all that much. There was a Reva-esque character that wasn't quite like how she was presented in the Kenobi uh, trilogy, so to speak, but a different take on that villain. Completely different, by the way. So anyways, guys, I would love to hear what you all have to say about this, and if you guys did enjoy the content for today, make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel, and I will catch you guys next time.